When we talked about cycles, we talked about the life cycle of a butterfly. Remember, the life cycle of a butterfly starts as an egg, then it is hatched as a caterpillar or larva, which then creates a chrysalis, and eventually it emerges as a butterfly and lays more eggs or fertilizes female eggs. We call the process of changing from larva to butterfly metamorphosis. In this unit, we are going to be learning about other animals that go through metamorphosis. One of the words that we will hear in today's read aloud is the word habitat. A habitat is a specific environment or place in which plants and animals live. There are many different types of habitats in the world. There are deserts, forests, mountains, grasslands, and tundras. Here in Utah, we have a lot of desert habitats and lots of mountain habitats as well. We've learned about a lot of different animals that live in these different types of habitats. Some animals, like deer, can live in many different types of habitats but other animals need a specific type of habitat to survive. For example, penguins need to live in a tundra habitat. Think about some of the animals that you've learned about. Take a minute to see if you can figure out what kind of habitat that animal usually lives in. Another word that we will hear is the word insect. An insect is a small animal with six legs and three main body parts. We will learn about what those body parts are in this unit. Social. When we use the word social scientifically, we're talking about creatures or animals that live together in organized communities. Honeybees, are a social insect because they all work together to keep the hive running. Solitary. Scientifically, solitary means any animal that lives alone or in pairs. Most flies are solitary insects. Take a minute to think about these questions. First, what is the smallest animal that you have ever seen? And do you know of any animals that have six legs? Now I want you to think about a time when you have interacted in some way with an insect. What did it look like? Where did you see it? And what did you do? Were you afraid? Or were you curious? Did you come closer to learn more about it? On this picture, we have lots of different types of insects. A lot of the pictures that we're going to show in this unit have pictures that are super zoomed in. So the insects are way bigger than life size. They're not actually that big. Look at the insects in this picture. Do you recognize any of them? Have you seen any of them here in Spanish Fork? What do you know about the insects that you're seeing? Even though every animal in this picture is a different animal, they all belong to a certain category or group of animals called insects. For the next several days, we are going to be learning about small, six-legged animals called insects. Insects are the largest group of animals on the Earth. That means that there are more insects on Earth than any other animal, including humans. There are many different types of insects. Again, insects are a category of animals that is defined by certain characteristics that they have. We are going to learn about those characteristics in this unit and which characteristics make an insect an insect. Hello, boys and girls. 
I've been invited to join you today to talk about a very important subject, me. Who, kn who knows what type of animal I am? Right, I'm a fly. I'll bet most of you have seen lots and lots of flies, haven't you? I'm told that you find us flies rather annoying. So I'm guessing that you've probably swatted at one of my billions of cousins at least once in your life. I'm wondering just how much you really know about us. For example, did you know that I could walk straight up a wall? I'll bet you can't do that, can you? I have thousands of tiny hairs on my feet that act like suckers. These hairs attach to the wall, acting like suction cups. I am a housefly, the most common type, but there are many other fly species on Earth. A species is a group of plants or animals that are alike in important ways. Horseflies, robber flies, fruit flies, gnats, and mosquitoes have many different species that all belong to the same group. Scientists group animals into different categories. What different kinds of animals can you name? Fish, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and insects are just a few of the animal groups that you know. Flies, like me, belong to the largest group of animals on Earth. Who knows which group is the largest? Insects. For every 10 animal species in the world, about eight of them are insects and scientists continue to discover more. Insects are small animals with six legs and three main body parts. We flies are insects, and we share the planet with millions of other insects in many different habitats. Habitats are the natural homes of plants and animals. Can you name a few? Deserts, forests, mountains, grasslands, and tundra are some you may know about. During the next few lessons, some of my fellow insect friends are going to teach you lots of interesting facts about insects that live in different kinds of habitats. We insects live all over the earth, everywhere except the ocean. Insects can even live in some very cold or very hot areas of the earth. We'll start today by looking at meadow grasslands. Look at this field of alfalfa. Do you see any animals in the picture? It just looks like an ordinary field without much going on, doesn't it? But don't be fooled. This field is teeming with life or full of life. If you sat down in the middle of this meadow and closed your eyes, you would likely hear birds singing, but you might be completely unaware of the often silent hidden world of insects all around you. Many insects depend on plants to live. Many insects eat plants and some lay their eggs on plants. The plant on which an insect lays its eggs and which provides food for its young acts as a host and is called a host plant. Though sometimes host means someone who's, who's holding a party, in this case, a host is a plant or an animal on which or in which another, another thing lives. Each host plant attracts different types of insects. Many insects have developed very specific diets and would die without their host plants. Many meadow plants attract grasshoppers. You can see a grasshopper in the top left picture. Grasshoppers feed on the leaves and stems of the alfalfa plant. Harder to spot is the tiny leaf hopper. The leaf hopper is in the bottom left picture. But this wedge-shaped insect can slow down the host plant's growth, turning the plant brown as it sucks nutrition from it. Many insects, such as these tiny aphids, the ones on the right side, can damage entire meadows. Grasshoppers, leaf hoppers, and aphids are all pests. Farmers are never happy when they discover them on their plants because they can destroy their crops. But not all insects are pests. 
Do you know what the insect in the right picture is called? That's right, it's a ladybug. Did you know that ladybugs are some of the most helpful insects on Earth? They feed on aphids and the eggs of moths and beetles that destroy crops. Lace wings and ambush bugs also eat aphids. So farmers are happy when they see these insects on their plants. From grasslands, let's move on to a forest habitat. Both cone-bearing evergreens and deciduous trees live in this forest. Remember that evergreens have green needle-like leaves all year round and deciduous trees drop their leaves in the fall. Many trees, like the, these pine trees, are hosts to a variety of bark beetles. These tiny insects can kill huge trees. How could that be possible? Bark beetles burrow or dig under a tree's bark, creating a series of tunnels in which they lay their eggs. Hmm, let's think about this. Do you remember what a tree needs to live? A tree needs water, nutrients, and sunlight in order to thrive. By burrowing into the layer of wood beneath the bark, these beetles stop the flow of nutrients or food and water throughout the tree. This often kills the tree. Lots of insects live high up in the treetops of the forest, and many insects also live on the forest floor. Can you think of any? Ants are one of the most common insects on Earth, and many live in the forest. Unlike many of us solitary insects that live on our own, ants are social insects that live in colonies or groups. Take a moment to think about how social insects and soli solitary insects are different from one another. All right, let's look at an especially interesting social ant that lives in the rainforest. This is an army ant. Army ants travel in big cooperative raiding parties to hunt prey. Prey are animals that are hunted and eaten by other animals. Army ants resemble or look like an army of soldiers as they move across the ground together. These ants are known for swarming their prey all at once. You'll learn a little bit more about ants another day. So let's take a quick, quick peek at one more forest insect. This beetle is named for the long, large horn at the front of its head. Does its horn look like that of any other animal that you already know? I'm thinking of a much larger animal. I'm thinking of a rhinoceros. The rhinoceros beetles use their horns for digging places to hide and for finding food. Male rhinoceros beetles use their horns for wrestling with other males in an effort to attract a female beetle. The winner gets the girl. Look at this picture. What kind of habitat do you think this is? This is a tundra. What kind of insects do you think live in the coldest habitats? There are many types of flies on the cold tundra, including house flies like me. This arctic crane fly has amazingly long legs. And guess what? Adult crane flies have no mouths, so they never eat. These mouthless creatures only live for a few days. Take a minute to think, why do you think they only live for just a few days? Some insects are aquatic, meaning that they live in or near water. Here's one that you may have seen in rivers, ponds, or streams. This insect is a dragonfly. A few minutes ago, however, I told you that there is one large water habitat that does not support the life of insects. 
Do you remember which habitat that was? It was the ocean. Let's look at the Earth again. Is Earth covered by more land or more water? Right. Nearly two thirds of Earth is covered by water, and most of that water is in our oceans. Think about it. Oceans are the world's biggest habitat, yet no insects live there. But insects found on only one third of the Earth's surface are still the largest group of animal on the entire planet. Flies, grasshoppers, ants, caterpillars, beetles. These are all insects, yet they look quite different from one another. Different shapes, sizes, and colors. So what makes an insect an insect? You'll find out in our next lesson. In the meantime, be thinking about how a fly is like a grasshopper, or how a beetle is like an ant. Even though these insects look different from another, take a minute to think about some things that some of them might have in common. Have you ever heard anyone say that they were eaten out of house and home? This proverb is another way of saying that someone or something has eaten all of the food in your house. Instead of saying, when my friends came over, they ate all of the food that we had. You could say, when my friends came over, we were eaten out of house and home. In today's lesson, we heard about a few insects that live on and eat different types of plants and trees. For examples, grasshoppers, leafhoppers, and aphids feed off various types of plants and can even eat enough to destroy entire meadows. These insects, which also live on these host plants, can be said to have eaten themselves out of house and home. Hello, my friends. I am here with some questions about what we just learned about, as always. But good news today, I only have four questions, only four. The first one is what is the largest, largest category of animals on Earth? If you said insects, you are correct. Insects are the largest category of animals on Earth. In what large water habitat are insects unable to survive? Remember, they can survive in any habitat except this one. What is it? It is the ocean. Not just any water. There are plenty of insects that can survive in lakes and rivers or ponds but they can't survive in the ocean. Many insects, the, our third question, we're almost there. Many insects depend on host plants to stay alive. In what ways do the host plants help the insects? Those host plants provide food, usually from leaves, and a place for insects to lay their eggs, also usually the leaves. Remember, a lot of insects, like the butterfly, once it hatches, it eats the leaf that the egg was on. All right, last one, here we go. If you were a farmer, which would you rather see on your crops? A ladybug? or a grasshopper. What do you think? Remember, grasshoppers kill and eat some plants. So if you were a farmer trying to grow plants, do you think you'd want a grasshopper on your crops? Probably not. You'd probably rather see a ladybug. Ladybugs are relatively harmless to crops. All right, my friends, that's all the questions I have for you. 
but I do have some more work for you. I'm going to jump on my computer and I'm going to show you what that PDF is going to look like when you open it and what you need to do with it. The assignment for today's lesson is a journal page. In this domain, we will be keeping a journal to help us remember all of the information we're learning about insects. Today, our journal entry is going to focus on your own personal experience with an insect. So for today, I want you to think about a time when you saw or interacted with an insect. And you're going to tell me about it in a very short story. Your short story should be three to five complete sentences. It should include information about what the insect looks like or looked like. It should include information about where you saw the insect. And you should tell me what you did and what the insect did. What did you do when you saw the insect? And what did the insect do when the insect saw you? When you are done writing your journal, in this box where I just wrote those instructions, you can draw a picture of your story or of the insect that you are writing about. There are two pages for this journal. You'll start your story here, but if you need extra room, you can use the second page as well. The next couple of pages are a letter for your family so they can know what we'll be learning about in the next couple of weeks as well. You don't have to do anything with those two pages. They're just there for you to read. All right, so your story, it's gonna be very short, but it should include, make sure you hit those three things. Tell me those three things about the insect that you saw. I'm thinking about a time when I saw a fly. So when I write my story, maybe a little bit bigger font size. You can see it better. I remember one day I was enjoying a delicious piece of pizza. It's going to look a little bit funny because I'm typing and not writing on it, but that's okay. I was enjoying a delicious pizza, a piece of pizza in my kitchen or at my kitchen table. Then a huge, ugly fly flew right at me. So I explained where I was and I explained what the fly looked like. I do not like flies. I think they're ugly. A huge ugly fly flew right at me. And do you know what I did? I swatted at it. That means I moved my hands really fast to try and get it to go away. I swatted at it with my hands and tried to protect my food. The fly kept biting at me. Oops. Here, we'll do a little bit smaller font this time. We'll see if that helps it make it more readable. Hard to figure out how this is going to line up, but that's okay. There we go. The fly kept diving at me. It wouldn't stop. Finally, I moved to a different room in my house so I could eat my pizza in peace without a fly attacking me. That's all you have to do. Just tell me about a time when you interacted with an insect. When you are done, 
you can come up here and draw a picture of your insect. So here I would draw a picture of a fly or of me trying and not succeeding very well at, at making the fly go away. All right, my friends, when you are finished with that, you are all done with knowledge today, and I will see you next time.